and special occasion to publish a short publication on FMCG uh, goods and pharmaceutical industry. I welcome everybody. Uh, today's uh, speaker, I would request our treasurer, Sri Pravin Singh, sir, to escort our today's speaker on the <laughs> We are fortunate to have a technical meeting as well as an online meeting today, and I am very happy to see so many happy faces eager to meet each other. This week, about this program, I have to ask to the Monarch Fund for the other Good afternoon, friends. Thank you, Aditya Ji. Friends, uh, today on behalf of uh, Publication Committee, I am glad to inform you that uh, we have come up with a unique publication on the specific industry of FMCG and pharmaceuticals, wherein we have covered a GST issues and a way forward of that particular industry. A lot of issues we have seen that is prevailing into those industries. And for that, we are fortunate that we got a super author who is present uh, with us, uh, Jigarbhai Doshi, who is by qualification. And uh, the book has also been vetted by CA Divish Ji Lakshivala. So I request uh, Jigarbhai uh, to say a few words about it. And before that, I request our president to present a uh, uh, floral bouquet to welcome our author. Uh, so, with this, uh, friends, uh, let us uh, read the publication. Friends, uh, I request our author, C.A. Uh, Jigarbhai Doshi, to say a few words about it. ACPM, members, Alokshar, Anishar, Director, Munar, everybody, esteemed Dias and members, thank you for being here and allowing me to speak for a minute or two. A simple thing, to read is something which we all do, but to write is very different atmosphere. So, I started writing in COVID times and uh, launched a book on GST assessment and audit a uh, few months back and that was uh, a time when I decided that we should write more because that is the best way of learning and spreading the knowledge. So today, if, um, if, um, if I have a main scale and I ask everyone, let's gain the knowledge that we are possessing in this room itself, it will be an immense weight that we will gain. But are we really spreading that weight uh, for the generations to come or for the people or for the industry or for the practitioners. That's a question that we need to ask ourselves. Uh, so that was the only reason why I started penning down my thoughts. And uh, trust me, the biggest task was write, writing a small version. Uh, Munar told me, uh, we want a small publication. I said, I write a book. I can write 500 pages. He said, no, we have to limit it because people will not uh, read it. And Munar, thank you for, uh, for uh, giving that guidance. That, you know, we need 
a small publication we call but a huge book and that was more time consuming for me because i had to shorten it uh, i would request all to read uh, and also pass a feedback back to us because we would like to do more and more on this front and spread knowledge for each and every one so in case you have any pharma clients or you are inclined to learn more about pharma or fmc sector try to read this book give yourself that time uh, and give us the feedback i will be more than happy to implement uh, those feedbacks and uh, keep spreading the knowledge that's what for the board thank you so much Thank you, Jayendra. Uh, friends, I would like to make it clear that I have not uh, given any guidance to the speaker, but he hasn't read it. And uh, it is a wonderful publication. I have gone through personally, and I also request all of you to go through this. This will help you a lot in your day-to-day -day practice. And friends, at this juncture, I would also like to thank uh, our president Alok Bai for giving us uh, this opportunity, and my entire team, my co-convener. Anvesh Pokharia and our chairman Rajesh Bai Kalati for this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Manavish. Uh, prior to moving to our uh, study circle meeting, uh, we have a very special member of ours who has completed a half marathon at the age of seventy. I would request uh, our president to felicitate with the medal, uh, Mr. Anvesh Jawhar Mutra sir. Thank you, President Sir. Uh, now I would like to welcome our uh, speaker for that day, Sir Janak Bagani Sir. And I would like the uh, president to welcome him with a uh, flower, a floral welcome, and offer him a bit of support. Hi. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation, Janusha. I would request my co-presenter, Dr. 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 Welcome, friends. Before I introduce our today's speaker, mentor, and uh, what do you call our own member, Janak Bai, who has always been uh, very active, very interactive with all the members of our association, and always ready to give guidance. Uh, I like to make a few announcements. One is the settlement scheme is coming. From first of April, with the cash for this, we must have already seen that a lot of recovery actions have been initiated by the uh, officers. So we have met the commissioner yesterday. We have filed the representation today, and we are again going to meet the commissioner today evening and explaining the situation and the ground level that how the officers are without waiting for the amnesty scheme trying to recover the amounts not only by touching bank. Sending letters to the society, but even attaching the remand accounts of many members. So we have we are also filing uh, another representation then to the mandalay also with this regard. We have also seen that uh, I don't know how many of you got time to go to the Maharashtra bad site today. It is not working at all. That also we have represented today, and we are going to meet the commission this evening, and we are going to mention to him that. So and so things are happening, and at the back end of the due date, uh, we cannot uh, uh, cope up with all this work. In fact, I'll give you one example which happened live in my own case yesterday night. This is income tax. Yesterday night, ten sorry, yesterday night, ten thirty, faceless assessment notice received. Intimation for hearing 
on 29 that is today at 9:30 am that is how the department is trying to give up you can say only a formality as far as hearing is concerned uh, not taking up uh, uh, or following due course of procedure in law or neither giving any proper opportunity of hearing and uh, unnecessarily a client client is okay client is sleeping but i am under <laughs> tremendous pressure to file the adjournment letters etc etc in fact 9:30 i tried to log in also and by 9:35 logged in in the system with the password and they says that the session is ended you cannot do anything so this is how things are working right now but we are trying to meet the commissioner today and uh, take up the uh, issues of our members with the commissioner <coughs> and uh, i would also like to uh, thank all of you that this is the first physical or hybrid study circle which we are conducting after a long time uh, and it is really good to see faces around because computer pe to khali do ya teen hi face dikhte hai zyada zyada right so we have lot of people also i uh, admire the uh, appreciation of uh, all my members who have come on the uh, Uh, online website also thank you so much for joining us uh, settlement scheme is going to be uh, uh, one of the key areas going forward up to september so i'm sure everybody is keen to listen to this and coming back to our speaker for today shri janak bhai wagani uh, he doesn't require introduction but i have to do the formality again like the officer so he is a practicing chartered accountant since 1985 Mainly on sales tax and now on GST, he formed an LLP under the name and style of Messrs. BJ, BJU and Associates LLP, with other reputed CA practicing in the area of direct tax, including inter international taxation. He has presented papers at NRRC, RRC, organized by various professional organizations on subject of sales tax. He was a member of the study group of WRC of ICI. For publication of guide to MPAT audit and issues on MPAT audit published by WRC, he regularly contributes in articles and columns on sales tax in various tax journals. He regularly gives lectures on sales tax, VAT, and GST, various public meetings, seminars, conferences, study circle meetings, guidance and coaching class organized by various professional and trade organizations. He was the chairman of the Malak Chamber of Tax Consultants. He was the national treasurer of the AFTP. And at present, he is the national vice president of the AFTP Western Zone, and he is a member of the editorial board of the uh, journal published by the AFTP. Uh, he is also the consultant for various trade associations, chairman of Mega Guidance and Guidance Cell Committee of our own GSTPM, and member of National Executive Committee of the AFTP. With this brief introduction, may I uh, ask everybody to give a loud applause for? And now, without wasting further time, I would like to hand over the mic to Janak Bhai. But before that, let our president also give an opening remark on this occasion of physical meeting. Respect the chairman of the Arana Committee, Chief Justice Sir, Treasurer Pravin Shinde, Convener. Aditya Sima Pradeep, Rahul Nattar, and all my delegates, all my senior friends, senior professors who are in virtual also, I think welcome to all of you after the two years of the pandemic, physically over it. It's a great occasion for all of us, like occasion. Basically, after two years we are gathering together and we are you know, continuing with our old charm of such a good meeting. And also, thank you once more to all of you that you are here. And uh, and really, uh, yeah, yeah, we put, my plan was today that we will keep physically only, no live streaming. Okay, that is what my plan. That people meet here only. But then the members uh, have requested so long that by this time, you know, let's let's we have the virtual meeting also. So we have kept the virtual meeting also. But I would request all of you next time, uh, even for virtual, please come physically. Let's have a fellowship and let's have a uh, let's have a proper team for that. You know, it should be good for all of us to meet all of us. Now, uh, I really thank you to Digital Bhai uh, for this uh, publication. I am really thankful to him. Uh, one of the things which come before my mind, because my mind has been too much. Thank you for that. I thank you to Dibe Jati Bala sir for taking, uh, making, uh, I think, uh, cutting the whole uh, publication. I thank you to Chairman Vijay Patel for writing and Monas Patel for the work. For the organization work, you know. 
As usual, I told you that uh, things are going very good, and uh, till till now the things are going very good, and now the I think the corona is gone. Let's again meet all together for uh, many more conferences will come and all, many more educational seminars will come and all, to to attend the seminar and all. Let's make our association more prosperous for next year and all. So, Vidhi, thank you so much once again, and let's hear it now. Thank you, Vidhi, for coming here. All the best, Vidhi. नमस्कार जयसी कस्टम जय जिनेंद्र जय सामिनारायण जय जीएसटी के वाह और प्रेसिडेंट मिस्टर आलोक नेता द कलीग्स गुरु वेर ऑन द डायस ना ऑफ द डायस एंड माय फ्रेंड्स एंड ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स and the persons on the virtual platform meeting me at the outset i thank the president and the chairman of the lnr committee and convener for giving me an opportunity to speak before you and also to speak on the subject for the first time and giving me an opportunity to be the first person to speak physically after the corona friends uh, this is the third mnst scheme after 2016 in five six years we were trying for the mnst scheme since 2014 i remember deepak bapar deepak bapar who had met that the, the chief minister when his hawala all this thing was happening but for some reason it was not happened then in 2016 first mnst Then again in 2019, second MST. Then again now the third MST in 2022. And uh, people say rightly that we will be getting the MST system every three years. <laughs> But whatever it may be, it was required this time. And uh, I must make a mention of our outstanding member, Mr. Abhiji Bhave, that who was telling us to make a representation last year also. For one more MST team, but we were there several times because of the COVID situation. The industry was suffering from the financial difficulty, and we today they are suffering. And on the top of that, whatever the balance they had in bank account is being attacked by the department for recovery. And which recovery? During the lockdown period, they had passed the expiry order. The orders are not served. They are still on the border. Person do not know when the order is passed, and because of that, they could not file an appeal. And now they are addressing the bank. One in one of the meeting, few years back, the commissioner of the board telling me that if we don't enforce the recovery, the people will not come for the MSP. <laughs> But he had a one very good judgment under the service tax. I think mean, Asif Bhai can remember that when I got the citation, that when the amnesty scheme was declared, or such as some other act, and when the payment was enforced before the expiration of the date, the court had determined that this payment should be considered as a payment under the amnesty scheme. That should be the spirit that if you are recovering the money beforehand, wait for four days, charge in the court or whatever. Today is twenty nine. So all will allow me to make the payment today. Now, anyway, this is the story and the situation. We were thinking that uh, the income tax deadline is over, nine and nine is over, everything is over. We can enjoy the vacation with the family. And Alok Bhai has already announced that the international study should for the thirty five members. I was hopeful that people will demand till Monday more. 
But now this settlement scheme has introduced, so we will be busy on this. The bill was presented on 16 March 2022. The name is the Maharashtra Settlement of Areas of Tax Interest Penalty or Late Year 2022. For the purpose of the simplicity and to understand, I have used the word amnesty, otherwise that word you will not find it entire. It is a settlement. And when the material of the settlement, then the businessmen, they should not consider the business. You can't gain in the me measure the gain or loss in a settlement. It is a settlement, pay it and forget it. If you don't pay it, okay, fine, then continue with the appeal and litigation. But according to me, this is a very good scheme considering the all other schemes. And uh, when the last time also we made a representation that uh, whenever you announce the scheme, then give us an option to make them by installment. And uh, there should be a delay for confirmation of making the application. Because the payments are online. And without online payment, you can't make an application in 2019. We have seen that. Till today, many cases are there where the application could not have been filed because children could not generate it and migrated to the system. So we were unable to file the application. And this time they are very generous. And overall, if I say in the one liner, this is a bold and beautiful. This scheme is a bold and beautiful. If you can, then you must get the benefit of the system. What is the duration of the scheme? Last time we had a two phases, first phase and second phase. Now this time we have a single phase, six month time is given for deciding and making an application. We will not find such a larger period in any of the schemes. April 2022 to 30th September 2022 is the period of the scheme for which you can make an application and make the payment. But the payment is to be made during this period, during this period. But when you opt to make payment by installment, then the first installment must be made during the period of MS. And balance may be made thereafter. We'll see whenever we move for that topic. So unlike earlier MS system, when the payment and application was to be made in the scheme period. This scheme allows you to make the payment by installment even beyond the MSP period. And the time limit for the application is the 14th October 2020. Then you can make the application and we have been given 14 days time and there is a provision for confirmation of the delay up to 30 days. <coughs> Under which act it is applicable? When this scheme was announced, people were saying, is it uh, available for the DST? I said, no. Wait for two more years. Two more years, two yeah. more years or three years. Now, just now, one of the person was telling me that, I, that I, why can't we make an application for the DST? Because let us wait, there are no adjudications. Let the adjudication process to be started, orders to be passed. And then we can ask for the representation for the Amnesty and another GST also. Now there are 11 acts administered by the sales tax department. There are further acts which cover the review of the tax under the, the Maharashtra government, but out of them only 11 are covered. Here I will not read the name Bombay sales tax, PST, CST, and VAT is covered. There are two MD tax acts, they are covered. But the third entry tax levied by the local body government is not covered. The entry tax and, the, and, the, and the, the local body tax, which was properly known LPD, that is not covered. Luxury tax is covered, sugar cane tax is covered, commerce motor speed is covered, the two deemed sales transactions, lease and the horse content is covered, and profession tax is covered. The funny part we will see that the scheme applies to areas payable under the relevant act for specified period means 
any period ending on or before 30th June 2017. Why this cut off date? 30th June 2017. Because thereafter we migrated to the GST. So the 30th June 2017 cut off date is provided. Mainly they wanted to target the disputes under the MVD. And that is why this scheme is there. There are the objects in the statement, object and return. That they want to unblock their capital and reduce the litigation, spending litigation. That is the objective. And to provide relief to the small dealers, they have provided this amnesty scheme. However, certain acts like professional tax, bad tax to the specified goods. CSTF is still applicable. To them also, COVID period, COVID lockdown was affected. And the hard hit industry was the hotel and tourism. <coughs> you did not allow them to do the business for the two years. And even you did not allow them to waive the late fees for filing of the return under the VAT law, despite our lot of representatives. Then why it is not being continued for them also? It should be and should have been. And then how we can avail the amnesty of the professional debt of two period of 30th June 2017, where the due date for the payment of professional tax goes beyond 30th 2017. Last time also it had happened. We made a representation, but it was not uh, given a court. This time also we have made the representation. And hopefully, we'll be able to get this X covered up to 31st March 2026. We are hopeful it is not right now. Please make it right now. Otherwise, somebody can say, the number of 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 the person who is liable to pay the of the tax, etc. Levy or level under the Labor Development Act or any other person, including financial institution, who desires to avoid the benefit of asset government by complying with the commission. Now, we know that the application can be made by the dealer who is affected against whom the areas are used are raised. Not only that, now the financial institution. And other person can also make an application for the settlement. Now, who could be? So, according to me, the legal head of the deceased provider, a transfer company, a resultant company in case of ML damage, they can also make an application under the settlement. It is possible. Then, the, there are cases. That when the notice is issued to the third party for equity of credit. Now the third party may also go for the amnesty scheme. Then there are the directors, so because the bad act was amended to make a provision for directors personally responsible to make the payment of the bad. So those directors can also make an application for the settlement reduce. Now, there are the different companies which have been stuck off. There are matters before the NCLD. There are resolution process persons who are there. Accordingly, all these persons can also make an application. Only the commissioner has to provide a guidelines and procedure that how they will log in the portal and how they will make the application for the third party use. Then, an application can be made by whether a person is registered or not under the relevant act. In case there is an assessment is made for the unregistered in the URD period, and that person also can make an application for the amnesty. Whether such areas are disputed in appeal under the relevant act or not, this is very important. Because the word disputed and undisputed is mentioned in this act. What do you mean by the disputed act? Does it mean that there should be an appeal or an application, division, rectification, reference? No. 
even you have not filed the bill, even you have not made any application, order is passed in your case, and still you can go for the administration. When the appeals are filed, today also, then also you can make an application. So there is no condition that there should be some dispute made by you against that order. So that is to be kept in mind. No requirement of filing of appeal today if you are not filed. That is to be written on the wall and should not be repeated this question in any WhatsApp. <laughs> At least those are hearing me today. Give me a tapping. Huh? Give me a tapping. It is written on the wall. No? See, the problem is not that sometimes the question is asked for the second opinion. And there are third and fourth and fifth. And not only for us. See, sometimes we want to claim one of the meeting commissioners said, why you ask for the clarification? Not for us. We are very clear. But your officers. They don't know what is the provision. And that is why we want everything in black and white from your office. In one of the meetings, the GST officer was saying that. I am the boss and I will I will pass the order according to my understanding. I am not passed by any circular. That is happening. The applicant who has availed the benefits under the earlier scheme, he can also make an application for whatever the benefit not given at that time or remaining anything. Which sum is eligible for the settlement? So, alliance means the outstanding amount of tax, interest, penalty, and rate. This is what we have to do. Hey, look, 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 Find and compulsion money. Find and compounding money, not compulsion money. Find and compounding money is not there when we can have ask for input, but there's an excess on it. As per statute passed under the relevant act, that's the first. Admitted in the return or as the can be revised return filed under the it has not been paid either only or only or partly. So even the written dues, revised written dues is also eligible for settlement. Any amount of say tax determined and recommended to be payable by the auditor in the audit report submitted under section 61, whether notice for recovery issued or not. Which is this? We all knew that there was a, a column in form 705 when audit report. When we, we were asked to compare between the written use and the determined by the auditor. And the difference thereof, we used to recommend. And then recommendation of the auditor was to be accepted in the statement of submission by taking accepted yes or no. If you take then accepted, then only it becomes that is eligible for the amnesty. Sorry, it is a only a sum, whether accepted or not, that will also become an eligible for the amnesty scheme. But when we go to a report, the dispute and dispute, and at that time we have to see whether it is accepted or not. Such areas of the tax interest money rate is pertinent to the statutory period and includes interest payable on the admitted tax. That is of the return dues. In respect of the return dues, the admitted tax under the relevant tax for the statutory period. Now, many times while filing the return, the interest payable for tax not paid is not shown. See, when we file the return, we don't show the interest payable. But in such case, of the interest payable on that return also is eligible for the settlement. 
Now we need to clarify that in such cases, the interest will be calculated up to which period? I filed the return in 2017. Shown the amount of tax payable and amount assessed in total. Then the interest, according to the law, it will be applicable up to the date of the payment. So when I make the payment of the tax in the amnesty period, then whether interest would be calculated up to the 31st month 2022 or up to the date of the payment, according to me, that should be up to 31st March 2020 because the whatever amount you make in the payment and uh, make in the scheme that should be considered a payment made under the act, settlement act. So that should be verified by the commission. And that interest is eligible for the amnesty. What are interest payable up to date? Now the eligible sum is divided in three parts. One is the disputed tax, second is undisputed tax, then interest penalty and late. The dues are divided into three parts for the purpose of calculation amount payable under the amnesty and the waiver. Disputed tax, undisputed tax, interest penalty, late, and fourth is treat whether they are not what disputed and disputed. So interest, penalty and late fee, whether admitted in the return in a voluntary report or not, is forming part of an accepted charge of produce, interest, penalty and late fee. And one thing, no amnesty for undisputed tax. 100% you do it. What are you saying? The amnesty is available for the disputed tax, interest, including post-assessment, penalty and late fee. Then we come to the question that what is disputed and what is undisputed. The disputed tax is defined to be other than undisputed tax. Simple one line. 2019 was the same position. Till today, the officers are not able to digest what is disputed and what is not undisputed. And now 22 has come. Despite very clear cut provisions to define the term, the NC Meta, our past president, some many times was telling me that there is no confusion under the law. The law is very simple. But when we don't accept the conclusion, then it becomes confused and complicated. By both the side. When as per the law, we tell somebody that you want to pay this money, he's not accepting it, the law is very confusing. When you accept the conclusion by the first side, then it becomes good and simple tax, not the GST. So what is undisputed tax? Tax is collected separately. Is a undisputed. And it's never so you can't pocket the money collected from the customer. Then this is very dangerous. It was there in 2019 also. Taxes shown payable in any return or revised return in other words, return. Okay, fine. If you have committed mistake in the return and then later you file the revised return, then what? Then the revised return substitute the original return. Then the amount payable as well as the revised return should be considered as the disputed use and not the original return. The deduction claimed or allowed for tax under the duties of the act or similar other act. Now, this has got the story. That under the Bombay Sales Tax Act, there was a rule 4060. And under the VAT Act, rule 57, when your price is inclusive of the tax. Then, when you deduct the element of the tax, then under the VAT, under the earlier Bombay Sales Tax Act, there was a provision when you deduct claim, when you claim the deduction of the sales tax element, then you were denied the refund when subsequently the tax doesn't become clear. So now they have made a provision that when you have reimbursed yourself 
to the extent of the tax element in your sales price. So it was considered to be a deemed collection of the tax. So it is considered to be an undisputed tax. Now we have got an MRB of the FMCG today, the Mr. Tigger has given us the book. And the MRB concept. Now, when there is the MRP concept, maximum retail price is supposed to be used of all taxes. When you sell the goods at MRP, then the tax payable on that transaction is increased in that MRP price. So we claim the deduction under the bad law and reimburse ourselves to the executed extent. Then it is considered as an undisputed tax. But when I don't claim it, but officer is allowed, then what? I have not claimed. Sometimes officers are generous. They give the deduction. Then we need the clarification. In such situation, according to me, it should not be considered as an undisputed, but should be disputed. Yes. So I am made it here only just for the purpose of our discussion on it. Is that not the reproduction of the end? Only for the purpose of the discussion, I am made it. Yeah. So, the earliest they have mentioned allowed as a Yes, yes. But for the name of the the So it says an amount claimed by the dealer as deduction as per rule 57. So it is a claim. What is that? Now the claim where? So the debate is there. They will not say that my officer has given you the deduction without claim. So when the claim word is there, claimed in return, then I can accept. But the word in return should be there. Then only the issue will be otherwise it is still debatable. Amount of tax forfeited in any order or excess current tax point in return, divided return, or audit before excess tax. So, amount forfeited under the law is a penalty, not amount of the tax, legally speaking. But they have included it in under the undisputed category. But excess collection of the tax. Shown in the return or in audit report, that is also considered to be undisputed tax. Any amount of tax recommended by the VAT auditor in his audit report and accepted by the dealer in two times. Amount of the tax recommended here, the word is tax not interest. For in the VAT audit report, many times interest was also recommended to be payable and accepted by the dealer. And some has paid and some has not paid out. But here only tax part is considered to be at least put there and not the interest point as it still eligible for the waiver. Now, many times the liability for the pending form was shown as payable by the VAT auditor, although it was not required. But some VAT auditor has shown it payable. And through oversight, it was accepted by the dealer. Then the liability for the pending form would become undisputed. So our representative should be in such cases. The liability for the pending form was never to be recommended by the bad auditor, was never to be accepted or not accepted by the dealer. There is a genuine mistake in the bad audit report, and you have not provided any rectification of the bad audit report. Then in such cases, the such amount of for the liability for the pending form would be considered to be a disputed that that should be represented. Then amount of tax deducted under the source by the employer, so by the employer, not in case of the contractor. When you claim the credit for the tax 
and is disallowing the assessment, then that will not become part of undisputed tax. Tax deducted in the case of the employer, it is akin to tax collection. So it becomes a part of an undisputed tax. And when I say about the tax deducted, this tax deducted under the relevant law, Bombay says tax, bad tax, or any other tax, and not the income tax. Please don't confuse with the DDS word, income tax and the sales tax, and not the DSC Amount of tax collected at source, the same government agency that allows to collect the tax at the source, and that is also forming part of the undisputed tax. Then the profession tax in the case of enrollment is the undisputed, and you don't get any MST for the professor tax table as an enrollment person. We know that we have two types of the professor tax liability, one for yourself and one for the employee. When you deducted the tax under the PTH, then it may become undisputed, but that is not shown here. Then. That is also undisputed. That is the tax deducted by the employer under the PTH. But enrollment person is also considered to be undisputed. That is no amnesty in PC for the tax matter. Then the amount of disallowed set off under rule 52 and 52 b of the VAT rule which is eligible to be claimed in the subsequent year. Now, which is that? Now, in case of the mobile, there was a one kind of so called scam as per the department. That in certain state, the rate of tax of the mobile was 5%. What the people do did purchase from here and sold outside the state. So there was a loss of revenue on the sale of the mobile. Again, that mobile was being sold in the Maharashtra at the rate of the 5%. So they brought the amendment that in case of the sale of the mobile, your set up would be restricted. To the extent of tax payable on the sale and the balance set up would be carried forward in subsequent years. Same was under Rule 52B and 52A for the different PSI unit. That you can't claim the set up to the more than the tax payable under the law. And that set up was allowed to be carried forward for the subsequent year. So that disallowance of the set up, which you carried forward in the subsequent year, is considered to be undisputed. But all other disallowance of the set of under rule 53, 54, 51, whatever it may be, is still to be considered a disputed tax and not undisputed. Then we have the credit of the done money. When I claim the refund, there is a stock of as of 38 to 70. And that set of I have not claimed. So there was no question of resource of the set of. So that I claim it as a grand one. But when I claim the refund and then grand one is there, then what will happen? So that they have to verify what will happen to that. The disputed tax may be as per statutory order of the assessment after revision letter or as per the order of the court or Supreme Court. It may be any revision. There should be on an order that we have to see. Then I have made there some illustrative list of the disputed as this to understand it is not there in the field. That there can be a disputed rate of tax or composition. So disputed rate of the tax. That could be the reason for the additional use in the statutory law. It's not about the set up or any other for any reason, like non-eligibility, wrong payment return, non-payment of tax by the vendor, mismatch or unmatch. Given there to accept them. What are the reasons that he set up is this law? Then here one may have a doubt that under the VAT law, I have claimed the set of and there was a refund which I adjusted against the CSP. And that refund is turned into the dues under the VAT law. So there is a demand under the CSJ to the extent of the VAT refund adjusted. Then in the CST, what would be the nature of that dues? Strictly speaking, it is a dues pertaining to the tax collection. You have made collection of the 2%, if you have paid less, 
In earlier 2019, it was clarified that that would be considered to be a disputed tax. So similar clarification required here also that that should be considered to be a disputed tax and not an undisputed tax under the CSP. Rejection of refund claim in the return but does not include an issue on the road to be a disputed which we have discussed. Increase in taxable return does not for any reason. Discounts of the taxi sales, good return forms, etc. But when we are going for this kind of the tax liability, we have to see that whether deduction was claimed in the return or not. If the deduction of the tax element was claimed in the return, then it will become an undisputed tax, not eligible for the return. Discounts of the pending forms. Under the VAT law 406 to 409, for subcontracts credit for the DDS also given the name into that, and under the CSH, C, even equal F, H, I, or J, etc. Now, when we are talking about the pending forms under the CSTF, then whether this settlement act is useful for the waiver of the tax, according to me. Only few persons will be fortunate to get this benefit. Why? Because when we file the appeal, we have already made the full payment of the tax. What is remaining after that? And when I have got the C form, then why should I go for the MSP? But there are some persons where the orders are not passed, still recovery is pending, not filed the appeal. Today only, on the, I, I discussed with some of my friends that he is the fortunate person, his client. That bank is attached, recovery is being taken, but no appeal is filed. So you are that lucky class of the persons. Otherwise, mostly it is an illusionary. Suppression of sales in the return and assessed in order. Yes. You can do But that, I am talking about disputed and disputed tax. We work part of the enemy. Now, one can amnesty interest in labor. Was a later that I mentioned that. Then, tax payable on purchase from unregistered purchase in the schedule is under the MRAC Act and under the PST. This can be a question in the KBC. Is there any provision for the legal purchase tax under the MBAT Act? Yes, in certain class was there. Now, dues arisen for any other reason like credit of taxpayer or PD or PCS not given. And these are friends, these are illustrative risks. There can be any more also. But for understanding, I have just given the list of the reason for the additional dues. So this can be the additional use, and you can get the amnesty for the waiver of the tax as a disputed tax. Now about this credit of the tax paid DDS and PCS. My understanding and my view is that you don't require any application for rectification of the mistake. Your it is not recoverable. I have already made the payment. You are not given the credit, so the commissioner should issue the circular wherever the credit of the payment is not given. Then, before I go for the MST, I should be allowed to reduce the tax demand to the next. And only balance amount would be considered for the MST. And coming to that section 6 for the determination of areas of the tax, then you will get the reasoning for that. Now we have got a special class of the dispute made by the state. We know that the state and department is also making application before the high court and appeal before the tribunal also. Or there is a re department has made any appeal and applications. Reference or appeal before the tribunal or the court. The demand disputed by the state department, including tax and legislation, may be considered for the settlement of areas by the applicant, and the application for settlement may be filed accordingly. In such case, once the amount disputed by the state department is settled, 
there shall be no refund or adjustment of the amount so paid. So who will go for that? When judgment is in my favor, department has agitated in the high court, then why should I go for the amnesty? Yes, I can give you an example of such cases. When the Supreme Court has given a judgment against the decision of the tribunal, not in that case, but in other cases. The famous case of the bonded warehouse claims, Dada Sarge Corbett. When in your case it is allowed, matter is pending before the High Court. In another case, it is said that bonded warehouse is not eligible to claim for the deduction. In such cases, you may decide to go for the amnesty. Then all the state has filed the application. But then they have to clarify which amount I have to consider for that. The base of the definite decision you may have was the refund of the tax payment also. So the dues originally as per the appeal, as per assessment, how to calculate that, that and they have to provide for the settlement benefit. I went one ahead. I want that to let you take a situation review of the petition filed before the high court because one of the objects of this scheme is to reduce the litigation. And we are not only the reason for the litigation, you are also that. Then the VAT on service check which is being lit litigated despite the amendment in the VAT. To withdraw that application. There are certain transactions where you have filed the application with the High Court and the Supreme Court has allowed it. So, like the Commissioner and the government to, should take a review of their litigation and decide and decide to withdraw that. So, no, no harm, there is no harm because it is already decided a law, you wanted to dispose. That there be a, 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 a settlement from your side also. Now, how they will allow to make an application and whether the state is required to withdraw the papers, letters, etc., that is need to be clarified. Amnesty for parcel issue, no. Talk of the town to that. The law does not provide amnesty for the parcel issue. We are going to make a strong representation. Already it is on also. We are hopeful to get it, but today it is not right. Why? Because when you say that order passed in the amnesty period is eligible for the amnesty. Then why not partial issue? Otherwise, what will happen? Everybody will run for passing of the order. And the appellate authority, they get the instruction from the commissioner. Top one red, top one red, top one. When my turn will come. So when you are allowed to give the benefit of the amnesty for the orders passed in the scheme, it becomes a duty of the commissioner to see that. All the orders are passed in that period. Otherwise, I can go and ask them to go to the High Court that because you did not pass the order in amnesty period, I lose the benefit of amnesty, so I should take it. We have got a judgment under the tribunal when we could not get the benefit of the waiver of the interest and the tribunal has waived the interest under the earlier. It is the need of the hour and the government should consider this allowing the conservation. Not only this, also self-assessment also. That when my ex-party orders are passed in the lockdown, how do I get the amnesty? <coughs> Where some is accepted, some is not accepted. Then section 6. Adjustment of determined areas of tax eligible for the settlement. What we discuss, what is areas of the tax? Now, what we are going to discuss, which is eligible for amnesty. Calculation part. 
notwithstanding anything contained in the relevant report under this head, I will come to why this is so. I will come later. Day. Any payment made in respect of a statutory order, either in the appeal or otherwise, on or before 31st March 2022, shall first be adjusted over the amount of undisputed tax, disputed tax, insurance penalty, so on. Why? Why this provision? Under the MBA Act, there is a provision that when you make any payment or any statutory dues order, it is being adjusted towards penalty first. Although you written the word tax interest, but it goes against the penalty, then interest and then tax. So to give us the maximum benefit of the settlement, this provision is made that the tax payment, whatever you made, as per the statutory order, except in the part payment in appeal. What was the reason, what was the payment you have made, whether by your tax interest or penalty, but for the purpose of this settlement act, it could be considered towards first undisputed tax. When you are required to pay 100% tax. Then what are remaining will go for the disputed tax, where you are required to make 50% tax. Then to the interest, where you are required to pay tax 15%, and then penalty itself. I mean, very good provision, because it is a, it is a, it is a benefit of the taxpayers. Otherwise, what will happen, all the payment except the part payment has been, will go towards the penalty. So after the adjustment amount has stated it was only the amount remaining outstanding for the specified year, if any, as on 31st April 2022, would be eligible for the MST consideration. Or any demand raised for the such a period by any stakeholder during the period April to 30th. So we have a two part. Order passed before 31st March 2020. When order passed during the MST. When the order is passed during the MST, the demand as per the order would be considered for the MST. Or order passed before MST. We need to appropriate the payment of the tax. Now, when the say that a tax paid under the act would be first adjusted and then the tax etc. Then tax paid but not given credit should also be adjusted accordingly. That was my contention when I said that any tax paid credit of PDS, PCS, disallowed in the return of order should be without passing of the order considered under the cover the undisputed tax, disputed tax accordingly. Can I take three deposits? It is a copy that we have registered against the undisputed tax. Any payment? That is not my words tax, sir. Oh, service tax, sir. Yeah, but my words tax. Can I buy it? Yeah. Did you have to ask for your assessment? No. Hello. Hello, hello. Who is it? Any demand raised for the specified period for my registered order? During the period first April to 30th, sir. Tax can be Tax will be a dispute here, depending upon what is the nature of the demand. So don't get confused. What is disputed and disputed is no part of period. What you have to see that demand as per the order represents which amount. Even if the assessment or your non-payment as per the reason would contain. And that would become an undisputed tax. When you have collected the tax not paid and it is there in the demand order, that would be considered as an undisputed tax. So disputed and disputed and disputed is to be considered not as per the order, but as per the reason for that order. And we have to see. And this will apply to return gifts. You have filed the return then you made an installment payment with interest. Then it would be considered towards the tax, and that, that interest payment also would be considered towards the tax. Because when you go for the installment, the department says that you have to pay installment tax plus interest. So that would go as a 
undisputed that that's disputed that interest penalty like that then also the recommendation given by the right auditor also would be the given same treatment now section 7 this is a new thing which we are seeing in our life is that is i can see in my life because i have not seen the waiver of box waiver of tax liability under any year under the bombay says that said there was a waiver of the tax liability under the right law there was a waiver by the gr that when the amount doesn't become recoverable then there is a procedure for the waiver of the demand by the government now here by way of fact not withstanding anything contained in the relevant act or under the provision contained in this act any areas determined as per any statutory order for the period as on 1st april 2022 which are rupees 10000 or less per financer under the relevant act shall be written off without any application i can say so okay and this even and the post assessment interest on such also will be written off so according to me from reading of the section 7 We don't have to make any application for the waiver. It is written up by the government, and we should not make any application for that. Sir, so the ten thousand limit is per act per order. All of them. So I might have ten thousand in CST, ten thousand in bank accounts. So it applies to both. Yeah, it should be. So not a cumulative limit per order. The limit is per order, according to me. Then the question is. In the budget speech, the finance minister had given some number of people who would be getting the benefit ninety-seven thousand. Ninety-seven thousand. Then there may be a case where I claim the refund, I file the appeal, demand is less than ten thousand. Then what will happen to that appeal? Because it is a return of by the state department without any application, there is no condition that I should withdraw the appeal. Then, according to me, in such cases, the appeal should be continued, and it is to be decided in the ten thousand rupees demand. We should give in effect in the order as a waiver law. Because there is no condition of I making an application or a withdrawal of the appeal. This is something out of the box. Requisite amount means an amount required to be paid by the applicant under the GST Act, and shall be the aggregate of the following: the amount specified must be of the level given in subsection two. First, undisputed amount of the tax, hundred percent. The amount of disputed tax interest penalty rate be whether levied or not as determined in section eight and nine of the Act. Fifty percent, twenty-five percent, thirty percent moderate may be that would be the amount. And as the given in the area or in the city affected to the act, so this total amount you have to make the payment under the settlement. If you make this payment, then only you are eligible for the settlement. Tax per year interest nahi bada. Interest per year tax nahi bada, so that will not be considered for the amount. So you have to make the total of. Undisputed tax, disputed tax, interest and penalty moderate. The requisite amount payable to all the secondary or secondary shall be as follows: when the same tax is undisputed or indisputed, and the extent of the payment shall be undisputed, disputed tax, or indisputed, disputed so and so. So we have to make the total of the package. We don't have option that we go for the disputed tax and not pay interest penalty. Or we pay interest and penalty. We don't pay disputed tax or undisputed tax. It should be total of all that. Now we have been given a one-time option and also option as per the installment.
then how to determine that amount payable on the memory? Where well, areas do you determine as per section 6 of tax, which is such a lengthy as per section order, is of 10 lakh or less. Where the areas determine as per this of the interest value lengthy as per any statutory order, 10 lakh or less. And if the applicant opts for payment of lump sum amount and the one time option, then the extent of lump sum payment will be applicable and never will be available as per the eligibility. So the 10 lakh limit is to be calculated how? That is called a in section 8. Take the demand as per the statutory order and reduce the amount what you have paid and balance amount is many is less than 10 lakh. Not the tax total demand. Without including post assessment interest. If it is less than 10, then you have option to make the payment 20% of the total limit. We have got Google annexure A or B because that period are there up to 31st March 2005 and that's balance year. According, you have to make the payment under the lump, lump sum payment. Now, how to make the payment? MTRC under the VAT and under the challenge of the earlier act. Now, the problem is for the earlier act. Online payment under the BSTF was not permitted. There was no such problem. Under the luxury act, no. Under the earlier act, no. First content and the lease act. So last time, in 2019, there was a similar issue. And they gave us one payment option, payment get gateway. This time also, they should give us the payment gateway. And they said, you make the payment through grass. Grass ka don't go malo ne kya ho hai. Grass has grass ni hai, grass ni hai. Diya, tell me. So that should give us a such a payment gateway that we can make at the click of our finger. It should be one step formula, not the two or three steps. And when we cannot make the payment on the portal, they should allow to accept physical payment. Or you are concerned with the payment, I am ready to give you the payment. But let us wait for the circular for this uh, procedural matter. Any payment made before the 31st March 2022 shall not be considered for the payment under the MSC. There won't be any waiver of the undisputed tax. When the application has made the payment which is less than the requisite amount as determined under the section, then you will be allowed to get the proportional benefit that is our disposal subsidy. By mistake, Gandhi over. You made a less payment. Then your amnesty will not be rejected, although they have rejected in 2000 in the lockdown period. Despite clear provisions, they have rejected the application. There is a problem of rejection when the application only on other ground, not for the short payment. We hope that they will give us an opportunity to make payment good. Short payment as that was in 2019 also. So it is sooner, it is better to make an application sooner than to wait 30 years. Or so. I propose that, that whenever I go for the MST, they should tell me in advance that what is the amount payable money under the system. So therefore, in under the SCL LDR scheme, Central Government Service Tax. That was a very good scheme that you make an application, then they will determine what is the amount payable. And they gave us the time under the that to make the payment in the so and so region. I mean that should be the correct law of administration of payment. But when we do that certain provision, we find that the settlement order when you receive, still it is not an end of the day. So we discuss the proportional waiver. I will not take the much time about that. Because uh, it is now only 420. How much time I have? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
then such, there is no provision to reject the application merely on the order that the payment is made by the new computer is less than the requisite amount. Now there is a special provision for the entry tax as for section 9. Why I saw that this entry tax under the Act 2002 for the certain goods was allowed to be given set off under the VAT Act. So when you claim the set off, which is denied, only that amount would be the entry tax calculation is there. So we'll not take much that is a specific case, and there will be an example for that. So the amount which is denied or the entry tax payable will be usually less than the amount to be paid by you under the entry tax. So when the amount is stable under one time option, our in case of areas more than 50 lakhs, then the applicant can opt to pay the amount by the installment. So we have got the three limits, 10,000 complete labor, 50 lakhs, no installment, and above 50 lakhs installment. Then how do I determine this 10,000, 10, 10, 10, and 50 lakhs? According to me, it should be per order as per act and not accumulate to all the areas. And we want this to be clarified, not for ourselves, for the officer also. Then duration of the payment for the scheme is 1st April to 30th September 2020. For option of installment, at least 25% payment for that option should be made in the MSP. Balance you can make after everything. So 25% at least you should make in the MSP figure. When you make that, then you are allowed option of three parallel installments from the date of the application. Suppose you make an application in September 2020, so from that nine months, you get a time to make the payment. Of course, it with the additional interest amount. The total bill of three four orders was 50 lakhs per order. 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 Yes, the question is that when, when the yeah. more than one order crosses 50 lakhs. No, it is a per order according to me. Let them play. It should be more than one order for the installment. I said, why installment limit of 50 lakhs? A, a small proprietor who is turnover only 5 lakh rupees and is asked to pay 1 lakh rupees in this COVID period. There are a number of the cases where the dealer have expired and their bill is required to pay the legal tax. So that according to me, this installment value should be given to everybody irrespective of the limit of the amount to be payable. Only they need the more uh, time to make the payment other than this uh, uh, big industry. Per order or per period? Per order. No, where can CST separate? Separate, per order for everything. Let, let it be clarified by the commissioner. My opinion is very clear, per order per year. Is 10,000. See, other what will happen? Now we will get the benefit of the 10,000. Yeah. Then, conditions application five other applicants shall have to be withdrawn, appeal to be withdrawn full and unconditionally. So, no partial benefit. Where excess set up or refund under the VAT Act is adjusted against the liability under the CSPF. All the tax on any tax and where such adjustment set or refund is reduced or denied in the assessment order, then in order to settle the dues under the CSTF or under the entry tax, a bill filed under the VAT Act is to be withdrawn. Now, what is it? That we continue when the set of is disallowed under the VAT law. So, we file two appeals under the VAT Act and under the CSTF. When you settle the dues of the CSTF, then you are not allowed to continue to file the VAT Act. You have to withdraw that Act also, that as well also. But when my VAT Act also considers the issues more other than the set of them, that should be allowed to be continued. No? 
to the extent of the set off adjusted under the CSL. Suppose 50,000 rupees set off, I adjusted under the CSL. My set off of 2 lakh or 5 lakh, 10 lakh is disallowed. Then to the extent of the refund amount under the CSTL, which is adjusted, only through that extent my appeal under the VAT Act should be withdrawn, not other. That is my view, otherwise it is unfair and illogical. The submission of acknowledgement application was withdrawal appeal to be designated also along with the application of the decision as a proof of withdrawal of the now the acknowledgement or application for the withdrawal of this should be considered as a proof of withdrawal. So we need not to go and run after the appeal of it for order. But why you want a separate application for the withdrawal? Now all appellate records are online. When I make an application, I give the details of appeal file, and that should be considered to be withdrawn. Why you want one separate application for it? It should be relevant. That let the application for itself contain the application for withdrawal of the bill. And it goes to them. And now the when the stay order are there issuing it goes to the recovery file. Now it can be done. Then separate application is to be made for each class of the views under the So it is not a one application for all the views. When we are required to uh, set up the return due, then we have been given a permission to consider the, all the returns, more than one return for a year. Suppose you have not made the payment for the 21 or uh, 16, 17. And you have filed 12 returns, so you don't require 12 applications. Then you can file one application for entire 16, 17, which covers more than one return. This is a very good provision under section 12b, where you have desired, you know, where you have made the payment, but you could not make any application within 14 October. Then further period of 30 days is given to condemn the delay, and he has not to see what is the reason, only has to read like what the reason for condemnation of the delay. Sufficiency of the reason for the delay need not to be extended like what we are doing for the restoration of the and that should be claimed by the commission that when I make an application within 30 days, it should be allowed to be confirmed without any reason. And no hearing should be there. When he wants to reject, then let him give his the And every application should contain minimum 25 of payment when it is for the installment. See, the scheme is that you make an application and you make payment of 25 percent. Then from the date of the application, you have been given a partial installment. Now, when I make the application on the 15th September, then how to calculate the partial 15 December, 15 March, and 15 June should be there? That should be the order of the application when you make the payment by the installment. Then they have made a provision that order of the settlement should be passed within three months from the date of the application. From the last date, special above payment under option for single payment. And for installment, last date of the payment option. So was in installment, we make an application before we make the full payment. So full payment would be at the last installment. So from there on three months time is given for passing of the order. Once the order is passed, then you are discharged of the debtor to the extent of the waiver of areas specified in the order. When the application is not in order, as per the provision, then only he can reject it, not for the short payment. All the short payment can be considered that it is not as per the provision of the But it is a specific provision. When the payment is short, then he cannot reject the application. For any other, yes, he can reject the application. That the before rejection, he has to grant the offer to hearing, but the instruction should be there that they should grant without that the order should not allow them to dismiss the rejected. But what we have seen in the lockdown video, they have rejected the application without hearing.
Now there is a provision for recoverable mistake. If you look at the heading of the section, you will not find it. Therefore, I made a separate given a separate given section. Section 13B provides an application for rectification. In 2019, it was allowed, but portal did not allow us. Still today also. So when they design the portal, they should also provide for this application for the rectification and passing of the order. Six months time limit is there, and they can make, allow the rectification order. Provision for appeal is there in section 14. Within six months due date, no, no provision for delay confirmation, and there is no second appeal. To the tribunal. Now, other miscellaneous important I have related because I have not taken the much time. So, there is a provision for the review of the within 12 months, section 15, section 16, provide by against the reported shooting of any proceedings under the relevant act, except specific observed made by the controller and auditor general, which are that is STRA. But there is no time limit here because, because so reopening is under the relevant act, not under this act. So they have not called it a time limit, it will be subject to time limit of the under the earlier act. Provides for the revocation of order. See, you have got the rejection, rectification, and third reject revocation of order. I don't know what you want. It is a settlement, you settle and forget it. And for us only one remedy, rectification and appeal, that is also six months. Here yeah, they got 12 months back. So no reform under this act. But when I made excess payment under the list, then it should be allowed. The commissioner is given power to prescribe the forms and procedure for the MST and then we are you will see that uh, by the first April. And the government has got the power under section 20 to remove the difficulty. So, whatever the parcel issue or they are free, that the commissioner government can notify under section 20 to allow the parcel assessment. Then there are some issues which I mentioned uh, listed out. That the dealer should be allowed to adjust the pending refund amount of the subscriber earlier year against the regulation of labor under MS. I want the refund for the 2008 may not given by me. You adjust in MST. And the amount payable under that, not the statutory order of any order. Then the parcel issue MST should be available. And also, when the notice is issued for the assessment, you have not passed the order, then the appeal is demanded back. Then, to the extent of the dues communicated to me by the non-deal, that is, given they to be spent checking form, that should be considered disputed, that should be allowed under the MST. Same way for when appeal is filed and pending and ex parte order are passed, demanded matter that the commissioner should take a bold view and allow the amnesty for that. In many cases, under the earlier law, earlier amnesty, I made the payment, I could not file the application. Or application is rejected, appeal is pending, appeal is not met, rectified is pending, that is not met. First, they should allow the amnesty under the earlier. And what are balance that should be? Eligible for the MST under the second law. You don't tell me that what you made the payment that is adjusted in your tax and you further make the payment under the new MST. That's all. Sir. Thank you very much and happy new financial 2022. Thank you. Okay, Brian, I think I think one of the marvelous questions done by Dan Bai. We have a good crowd today and many more ideas over here. So, online questions. Thank you so much. Thank you to Brian. Online questions. Thank you so much for being here.
Really, the inspiring is just for her and uh, be motivated for her. Uh, before I go to Aditya, there are online queries out there which you can know that, but I, I get compliment to the Praveen Sonavan staff and Aditya Satriya for making marvelous online system. Thank you, Aditya. 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 So, uh, Janak sir, most of the queries you have uh, answered in your uh, session itself, but I'll still read it out that so that do get, uh, those queries get underlined. So, we'll go one by one. Uh, first query is from Dilip, Dilip Nathari sir. Period mentioned is up to 30th 2017. If a per, so, if a person wants to get benefit of amnesty for PT uh, post 1st July 2017, will he be eligible? Right now, not. So, uh, what if assessment order passed by appellate authority after uh, 31st March 2022, that is in April 2022, whether the, those assessment orders are eligible? So, those are eligible. Uh, if the additional tax recommended by the auditor is accepted by the dealer, then the tax amount will be considered as undisputed. No amnesty for tax, only we can go for interest. Is it correct? Uh, CST order passed by nodal officer for non-production of tax forms. We are in appeal for the same. We have paid full CST tax dues. We have received uh, some of the F forms for which we will produce to the appellate authorities. Possibly appellate authority uh, will pass an order in April 22 or May 22. Whether we are eligible for amnesty scheme for the order passed after 31st first 2020. Yes, yes. You are confident. Yes. <laughs> Just he will have to make sure that it gets passed before 30, 30th September. Uh, whether the dealer have to make application for waiver when the arrears are less than 10,000 rupees. Then, uh, sir, whether the data of amnesty claimed under present scheme will be shared with income tax department or other any other tax department? <laughs> Why not? And, and, and it, is, it is advisable that you should be honest that we are and for your liability in your books are not written on the extent of the waiver. So, uh, there's one last question. Uh, complete waiver of arrears up to rupees 10,000 or less, whether tax is disputed or undisputed or both? Anything. Any, Anything any tax. 10,000 forget it. If you have 10,000 wanted to make the payment to one day tomorrow. Anything and everything. 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 Anything and so therefore, I get uh, some more queries are there in the chat box. I uh, sorry, I disturbed them. Uh, statutory order is passed for rupees uh, eleven lakhs fifty thousand. Dealer has paid one lakh sixty thousand on 29th March 2022. Can he pay uh, twenty percent of balance dues and yes, apply for it? Yes, 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 yes. So let us wait for the second one. Right. So, uh, one last uh, question is here. Uh, for the financial year 1516, order is passed by the assessing authority with tax demand of rupees 80 lakhs and interest of rupees 80 lakhs. We have paid interest 80 lakhs after order was passed. Now, how much amount to be payable for amnesty scheme? And will be adjusted against the tax, so then someone will be interested. So, okay. accordingly, you go for the amnesty. Okay. 
and whatever benefit is available to interest that will be allowed. Okay. So uh, thank you, sir. We are done with the online queries. Now we will move forward for the uh, offline. Yes. Uh,
So can I go for NHT in the old views and address even? Address many other than sir. Address many other than. अभी तक तो नहीं की। हमारे तो बैठना तो रोटी करे। सटी पर शक नहीं करे। नहीं करे। वो अप्रैल से फिर वो लागू हो जाए। Sending is very about late fees. The when you download, upload the data, upload, it is shown as immediate liability in the return. So whether the late fees is distributed, it is no concern of the disputed and disputed about interest payment. It is eligible for the MST subject to payment.
Christian person from the river, it is again the spirit of them. And if we recover them by the reincarnation, then they can also. What do you mean? Is, is, there is a one judgment of the high court when the scheme is announced, then they cannot make an enforced recovery. And the, what was the payment they have made that should be considered under the central bank? <laughs> So anyway, yes, Alok sir, you wanted to make it. Ah, there is a one question for myself. I have never told you what to do. I never said that what is the amount of table and the benefits. I have asked the question. Yes, sir. 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 So that is in that annexation A and B. So that is divided into two parts. That is divided into two parts. Figure up to 31 March 2005. Then on the disputed part, disputed tax, you have to make 30% better. And uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 30% and the uh, extra when you go for the extra and then 30 for principal person paper for interest 10% and uh, for uh, penalty 5% and post assessment no penalty. Where areas of the less than 10 years and 20 percent, and after 2005 year, the amount 30 percent because 50 percent payable. For installment, it is 56, interest 15 percent, and 25 percent that is mentioned in the annexure only. It does not differ any discussion, so many including here. Yes, sir. Uh, so we have completed the session with question and answer. I think I request all to pass to you the place. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. First of all, I would like to congratulate you to become an offline president by starting this guidance cell. I am even in school. Last week only, you will start such type of meetings and you are inviting Jadak Bhai as a speaker. It is very we good start to see you all over here in this 104. It is a really nice place for all of us. That's the reason I work with the money. I was going to give you the message that I don't get all the online and all. That was the running message. The first and that's true that everybody is not like one to weather and let's see this type of interaction. We give you the much more advantage. Whether we virtually and all. That's the reason that uh, now onwards I am planning to work with the uh, physically only so that people gather and invite the session to be carried out. And many more uh, events will come down physically only. So I would request whether uh, people should come over physically. If you have a link to the link, you can see that you have a link to the link. So that will be a better amount. And thanks to all of you once upon the time that you are joining here and once virtually or online, all of you are joining here and thanks to all of you once upon the time that you are joining here and virtually all the members, all the participants, thank you so much with us. Uh, it's a one of the uh, good session we have, and we started with the when we started, I will start my term which is physically as a settlement scheme so beneficial to the law and all that. So let's think we go going further and all that. Thank you once again, my admitter, because they will give a good of time. I thank you to the Rahul Dakar and uh, Aditya Shima, my admitter, and my uh, camera and my family, Shia Ashish Shah, for wonderfully planned and executed as a program. I think uh, uh, one thing I found today that she wants to IT support has been taken care by the Aditya Shiva for the Kandalar itself. That's what the worthy of this thing. Because the Kandalar is taken as the IT support and Swami Sunan was now. So we have a fantastic thing here. So we are meeting Akma Nirvan now that everybody should take the initiative to do this thing. Now Aditya, please go ahead with the follow-up to me. And I want to have a thank you over Aditya Shanan Bhai for the government scheme. Mr. Hobbit, I have a great opportunity to take this thing. So before proceeding to formal vote of thanks, Thanks. Uh, the book uh, has already been released on the FMCG and pharmaceutical sector, and the book is available for a physical sale over here. And the price of book is very reasonably kept at one hundred and fifty rupees. The same is available on the online as well. You can order from the GMPBM website. 
for which the charges are same, only courier charges need to be paid, which is also available on the online. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manaj Bhai. Now coming to the, the last leg of this session, formal vote for thanks. I am very much grateful and I am rather very happy to see people like whenever we have we are having lectures, it was just like the lecture left or what whoever was the speaker who just kept on speaking and we were half-heartedly attentive handling some other matter. But uh, I am sure that today, since we are bigger, bigger with the uh, physical lectures, the intensity of the lectures would be much higher. And I expect the, uh, rather the, the, the attendance online and both offline has been more than what we had anticipated. So I am thankful uh, from the bottom of my heart to all the participants who have attended today. Uh, I am also thankful to the, the speaker, Janet Bhai Vagali, to uh, accept our invitation and to guide us on this uh, topic. We will be bothering you again after the circular comes <laughs> and with the respect to the, all the procedural aspects of the scheme. Uh, I thank my president, uh, Mehta, to give me this opportunity. I thank my chairman uh, and my co commander uh, as well as uh, our president, uh, Pramit Jinde, to be on the diet. Thank you. And with, uh, yeah. uh, before we uh, will just raise my hand.